Welcome again, back to back, two nights in a row with Mission Accomplished. I am here. I got my guest in the green room ready to come on. Before I bring her on, I'm going to shout out my sponsors real quick. I got Holding Hands Massage, a VA registered massage place. Go see Jackie Holden. She's the shit. She's, um, you know, licensed with the VA. So uh, veterans can go get a referral from their primary care doctor. Go see her. And if you're not a veteran, you go see you go to uh, massagetherapix.com and schedule an appointment with Jackie through there. And my other sponsor is Killfoot Clothing, the maker of the first Mission Accomplished T-shirt. Hot shit on the market right now. Go see them at killfootclothing.com. And uh, you can pick up one of my Mission Accomplished Killfoot shirts. Just message me right now. We don't have a link on the website yet to purchase. So just message me your size and quantity and color that you want. And uh, we could set up a Venmo or something. But until then, I am going to go ahead and bring on my guest of the evening, Miss Miranda Maverick of the UFC. Here she is. Hello, Miranda. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, this is Mission Accomplished, the show where uh, combat sports meets combat vets. I like to bring on a fighter and a veteran as much as I possibly can, get them out to the world. It's a place where we get to know the fighter and know the veteran, talk about your career, talk about you as a person. So uh, how are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. Busy as always, but I'm glad to be on. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how you do it because you go to school full time for your PhD at Old Dominion and you also fight professionally for the, for the biggest company in mixed martial arts. <laughs> How in the hell is that possibly possible? Uh, it's not easy. And aside from that, I also teach for Old Dominion University to other grad students. So it's a, it's a whole mess. But it's one of those things where I don't want to let opportunities pass me by. And to have graduate school paid for, I do the teaching job on the side. And they cover my tuition. And it's kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get my PhD paid for. So um, I did that and took that opportunity and moved out to Virginia for it. And uh, no matter where the fighting goes, I want to have some kind of background for if I get injured or when I'm done with it at an early age. That's pretty incredible. I got to tell you right now, because uh, you obviously know how to manage your time really well. Being a military person, time management and multitasking is definitely a, a thing that we you know, try to be excellent at, but seriously, that is a full plate. I, I work full time for the military and I got two boys. That's about enough. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't yeah. imagine going to school or teaching or anything like that. Yeah. I can't imagine having a family along with it, but it's, it's definitely not easy. I schedule my time 30 minute intervals at a time a day and it gets very, very mentally stressful, but um, and physically, honestly, especially in fight camps when I'm so tired and then I stay up late to do my homework and stuff. And there's many nights where I get four to three hours of sleep, you know, and that's usually the sacrifice, but lately it's been a lot better and I've been trying to manage it more as time goes on. Now you just got out of a fight camp because for those who don't know, you were supposed to fight this past weekend against Julian Robertson. Uh, um, so what do you do now? Like you, you worked all the way up until last weekend, the fight got canceled. Do you try to stay in shape and pick up a fight as soon as possible? Or, um, Wait for that's a phone the, call. That's the hope. And uh, hopefully we can get a book pretty soon. We've both had like conflicts, even with our <laughs> schedule this time around. Um, McMaynard's trying to get us a fight set up, though, making a match. If it's not for both of us, I'm hoping to jump on another short notice at some point. I'm going to stay ready, stay fit, and uh, be ready to go. Just kind of jumping right back into training, taking a couple days for, I guess you'd say, personal time and getting back into the groove and getting my motivation back, getting back to it. I need paid just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, so that so the plan is to fight Jul uh, Jillian if possible. Uh, if, if possible, yeah. If the yeah, schedule is lined correct. up. Correct. Yeah. Um, if if not her, are you are you picky? Or are you like... Uh, I'm not any picky at this point. I just want to fight somebody. Um, of course, I've called out certain people. I wouldn't mind having a higher up fighter, but I also wouldn't mind having a girl straight off contender series. I don't really care. I need a few more wins under my belt before I have enough um, momentum, I think, to be fighting somebody <laughs> that's higher ranked. And I'd like to get this uh, contract done with and renegotiate for the next two before I fight 
a top 10 girl, but if it works out to where all this hype behind me ends up getting me a ranked opponent, then so be it. I think I'm ready for pretty much anyone that's in the flyweight division right now. Now, what did you think about the performance by Alexa Grasso last weekend? Do you think that's somebody that they, you think she's like a little too high up the, um, yeah, I think if anything, she'll probably be getting a title fight pretty soon, to be honest. Um, think I don't so? think, yeah, I don't think she, they give her to me. If anybody, I think Macy would be the fight to have that everybody would be hyping up because of our age, because of her whole hype that she had behind her there for a while. And I wouldn't mind that fight either. That's right. She's actually young. Is she younger than you? I think so, which is crazy. Which is crazy because, yeah, for those who don't know, she, you're 23 years old yes. and you've been a professional since you were 18. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah, technically the week before I turned 19, had my first fight when I was 19 in a couple months. That's amazing. Now, where did you start off your martial arts? What what age uh, were you when you started? Well, I was about, it's kind of hard to explain that. Officially, I guess 16. When I was a little kid and stuff, my dad roughhoused with me at home and like not just, you know, bullied me, but we would watch UFC and watch YouTube videos and learn jujitsu. And he never went to a formal gym, but he taught me a lot of the basics for jujitsu and just how to punch correctly. But we just wrestled at home and did jujitsu. And so I decided I wanted to go into that more and learn more of the self-defense aspect and be able to take care of myself. So at 16, I went to an actual gym for jujitsu went like every other thursday night and just fell in love with it uh, after a few weeks and um at 17 i watched my first set of amateur fights live and saw two girls fighting each other i thought it was absolutely embarrassing how bad it was and uh until that time i didn't really want punched in the face for a living i always said i didn't want to fight even though my dad was like you can be the best in the world at this when i was like 14 yeah. sitting there watching ronda rousey have her first fight in the ufc and my dad was like you could do that and i was like no 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 i don't want punched um oh. then I watched my first women's amateur fights uh, live and thought it was embarrassing and said i wanted to fight and my coaches were like hey don't say anything unless you've been punched in the face and um a couple weeks after I moved to college, which was only about a mile and a half away from my gym to where I could go every day, I had my first fight after doing striking for just a few weeks. So that, that is a lifetime choice of, you know, training. <laughs> that is absolutely insane that you didn't start till you're six. You really are kind of like a phenom in the sport because <laughs> um, to start that late and like – you you started at 16, right? And didn't you end up joining the high school wrestling team in your senior year? You just picked uh, up wrestling? Did you just? Yeah, just like literally wrestled for three months of my senior year, like jumped in, actually quit about three quarters of the way through the season at Christmas break because I was spending three hours after school training when I could have been at home helping my dad and family work on the farm. And I was homeschooling my siblings at the same time, too. And it was just a lot when I knew I wasn't going to be going to college for it, which was the whole point of me doing sports in high school to begin with. And I ended up getting a scholarship via academics anyway. So I quit the wrestling team, went to college. And then uh, that college ended up joint having a wrestling team my sophomore year of college. And uh, the coach actually interrupted a class of mine, my biopsychology <laughs> class came in, called me out, and it was this bigger bearded guy. And I was like, I've never seen this man before. I thought he was like a security guard or something. Pulled me out of class and asked me if I wanted to be on the college wrestling team, the men's wrestling team. I was like, uh, I'm a professional what? fighter already. Like, I don't know if I could. I don't think the rules allow me. And I can't attend all the training. And I'm not that great, you know. And he was like, I don't care. Just uh, it would help our promotability and it would help you train. And we really like your morals and this and that. And so I ended up being on a college wrestling team for a while. Holy crap. That is unbelievable. Because I, I wrestled in high school for a few years and I didn't. I wasn't going to go to college, but I actually quit my senior year because I was an, like an idiot. But um, I was actually pretty good. I probably should have stuck with it, but whatever. I can't even imagine you doing all the stuff that you do and then and then sprinkle college wrestling. <laughs> Jesus, you're just like a – you should write a book. One um, of these days. <laughs> you got a, a – com someone in the comments is asking, your PhD studies is in industrial psychology? Is that what it is? Correct. Industrial organizational psychology. It's basically business psychology. It's like statistics on um, employment and how the outcomes of an organization can be better. So I would be like the person that goes in and creates the testing that you use to get higher employees. And also the one that like helps find talent acquisition and like moves people up the ladder, promotability, goes in and evaluates a company's cost analyses and figures out how they can use their uh, resources to make their outcomes better. 
So I don't, I would don't imagine you watch a lot of TV with all the stuff you have going on, but have you ever heard of a show called billions? Have you ever seen that show? I, I've heard about it. In fact, I had another person at a podcast last week asked me if I had seen that. I have not seen it yet. Really? They probably asked it because of the same reason. They have like one of the main characters is like a psychologist that works for his multi-billion billion dollar company. Yeah. And he like sends all the employees to her every day to talk to her. And huh. it sounds like something that somebody with that kind of PhD would do. Maybe so. Maybe so. Now, I wanted to ask you about your uh, your your UFC debut. You grew up in Missouri, correct? That's correct. Now, I wanted to ask about your first seven or eight fights were all in the state of Missouri, right? So they weren't too far from home. And then you go and make your debut in Abu Dhabi at, in an arena that they built specifically for that <laughs> event on the other side of the world. What was that like for you? Did it change the way you trained to like, how did it feel when you got there? I honestly, maybe because partly COVID, maybe because I was just so excited about UFC in general, the experience itself wasn't like a shock to my system or anything. I've of course traveled for jujitsu mainly actually, but MMA fights, I went to Colorado, Florida, those kind of places, but mainly they were in Missouri. You're right. And it was a lot closer to home. My family would just drive up day of, it wasn't a big deal. And even for Invicta, they're based in Kansas city, Missouri, which is crazy and lucky for me. And right. The Abu Dhabi was just a huge experience, mainly because of how big of a card it was on, the promotability that it got, and flying out of the country for the first time in my life was pretty cool as well. But the sleeping pattern, having to get used to that, wasn't exactly exciting. <laughs> I, was, I was still doing yeah. Zoom calls and doing classes <clears throat> over there, and I was having to stay up till like 3 a.m. in order to attend class for school. Oh, wow. So did, did you fly on the, the super fancy jet that everybody sees on the embeddeds and whatnot? Uh, it wasn't a jet, but it was like a chartered plane. And they oh, you, you had your own little booth. Did you have your own little booth with a TV and all that stuff? Or uh, no? Yeah, it was like a nice, it was like a nice airplane class one seat. Like I had a seat that reclined and I had a little TV in the back of the seat and all that. So yeah. it was pretty nice. I loved it. <laughs> so it was probably nicer than the first time I flew out of the country, I would imagine. But probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. The first time I flew out of country, I believe was to my first appointment so oh okay. yeah yeah wasn't was on that uae plane that was yeah. probably nice. yeah uh, what yeah. did you yeah what did you think about your I, I can imagine that you were disappointed with the stoppage because you flew all the way out there you wanted to display your talents in your first ufc fight it's the biggest organization in the world you looked amazing in that first round and what i liked about your performance was the fact that like a lot of people considered you a grappler going in there and you stood on your feet and you kicked the crap out of her body. And then you hit her with that step in elbow that just blew her nose up. It was really nice to see, but then they stopped it mid mid round. Yeah. And it could be a bummer, but it's still a TKO, right? I mean, yeah, it was still a TKO and they stopped it in between rounds for a doctor stop and she was bleeding too much. They couldn't get stopped, but I do wish I would have had my hands on her when it got stopped. There would be less controversy around it. But then again, like a person's fans are always going to root for them and say how it was controversial if there's any way that they can say that. Um, but it's a good thing she didn't go in around two, in my opinion, to be realistic. I would have just that nose. She definitely wasn't getting her head movement going after I hit it like the third time. So I doubt anything would have changed. I think my ground game was stronger than hers as well. But I am glad that I got to show that other aspect. It's funny actually listening to people make predictions now, even if fight against Jillian. A lot of people have only watched that UFC fight and are like, Miranda doesn't have a good ground game. And, da, da, da. and I'm like, okay, well, that's what I'm known for, but obviously right. I'm not watching much. So, Right. And you, your last fight in Invicta was against Pearl Gonzalez, who's got a pretty strong ground game. And which I, what I thought was a pretty cool similarity because going into Jillian Robertson, Jillian lost in December and then bounced back with a submission underground bout against uh, Pearl. Pearl won that one and you guys your fight against pearl basically was on the floor almost the whole time. It, yeah it was it was just a ground clinic like I, I was just trying to beat her butt and make her miserable the entire time so i thought it was pretty comparable i watched jillian's match against her too i just feel like i'm the bigger stronger opponent against jillian period like she's not gonna be used to that pressure 
Right. Now, when I look at the women's top 15 in the UFC, I don't see all that much competition for Valentina Shevchenko. And you being the, the new hot up-and-coming star coming from, coming over from Invicta, you were you were like the number one girl in Invicta when you left, right? You yeah. weren't the champ, but... I was getting you, ready to fight the champ, and I should have already gotten a fighter over the tournament, but ended up having to take on Pearl, probably because she had more popularity behind her than me. So Right. So, realistically, how far away do you see yourself, like two, three, two fights away from possible title contention, or...? Um, realistically, I don't think they'd let me do that in two to three fights. I'm seeing more of a five to six fight kind of, um, yeah. I, I think I, I'd be fine with it, but I'm also fine with developing and being in my prime by the time that I fight her, which might be, I'm guessing a year and a half, two years from now is what I'm thinking. I would like to have a little bit more, um, experience in the octagon, a little bit more experience with that level of competition so that my mind, my physical abilities. Right. Well, I, I think that, I mean, obviously you're not even close to your prime. At 23 years old, you yeah, do you plan on fighting for a long time, or do you plan yeah, on like? I mean, I plan on fighting not until I'm 40. It would be nice. Right. <laughs> you is like a good like, but I've obviously got several years to go. But I don't want to be fighting Valentina and be getting paid chicken feed in comparison to her either. So as soon as that time comes around, I'm hoping I will have another fight contract, if not a couple from now, and have worked my way up the smart way, not just jumped into the fire. Right. I'm just looking over here at uh, at the top 10, and I see, like, I think you and Cynthia Cavallo would be a great fight. I think you and JoJo Calderwood would be a good fight. I watch, yeah. I'll be honest. I would. Lauren Murphy, on, maybe? I would take on Lauren Murphy. I would take on Jessica I, Joanne Calderwood. Casey Courtney or Courtney Casey, excuse me. Um, another one I, I called out was Antonina, Caitlin Chukagi, and I really want to fight those two. I think those would be good fights for me. Um, we'll see if that happens. Well, I, I know Chukagi has got a fight in May against Arroyo, but I don't see. I don't. I know you don't want to fast track yourself, but <laughs> Valentina's basically wiped that entire division out that's why i brought up alexa grasso earlier i think that like you and alexa grasso are, are two of the most intriguing fighters in that division right now what i'm seeing happening my anticipation is that joanne calderwood's going to be the and then after that it's going to end up not to be mean to jojo like the sweetest person ever but i would guess that Valentina will win that fight and then they'll put alexa grasso against her so we'll see though yeah. What about Jessica Andras? I mean, does she not have a fight coming up or is she hurt or something? Why wouldn't she fight Valentina? I don't know. I haven't really heard much in a little while about Jessica. It just seems like Jessica's always getting kind of bounced around if her fight makes it. Awesome. Well, you know what I do with my, I do this thing with, called the speed round with my guests and it's really it has nothing to do with fighting. It's just to get the audience to like, get to be friends with the uh, the person and learn about them that has nothing to do with fighting. You want to do it? It's called the speed round. Yeah, let's go for it. Boom. All right. Number one for Miranda Maverick. What is your favorite movie theater candy? Ooh, Reese's Pieces. Yeah. <laughs> I picked that earlier today. Me and my kids <laughs> and my wife were all sitting around the dinner table and I'm like, I'm asking her this and this and this. And they started rattling off Starburst and Skittles and... <laughs> My wife was like, milk duds. I'm like, milk duds. That's all cheap. You got to go for the good stuff. I'm like Love Reese's Pieces. Peanut butter. Jesus, it's not a better combination in the world. Yeah, exactly. All right. all right. Being 23 years old, I am in the army with a lot of young people. Do you know who the Wu-Tang Clan is? And how many members could you name from the Wu-Tang Clan? Uh, nope. Not even no? going to try that one. I could definitely not name members. Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's so. Oh God, I feel so old because they're like the greatest <laughs> group ever. And yeah, I've definitely read about them before, but I could not, for the life of me, name no. There's an awesome documentary on Showtime called "Of Mikes and Men." If you want to learn about the greatest rap group of all time, okay. Go all on. right. If you have time during your PhD studies, <laughs> what is the best foreign accent that you can do? Are you making me do it? Well, I don't know if you feel like doing uh, it. Do it I know. would rather not. Probably just like British or even Spanish, but that's just because I've spoke a lot of Spanish before in terms of learned it through school. 
Oh, you probably speak like four languages. Uh, I, I really, that's a regret of mine in life. I wish I would have gotten started at a young age, learning different languages. I think I would have really stuck to it. Once I got to it in high school, I couldn't stand my teacher that I had for it. And so just never, I, I let it go in one ear and out the other. Now I have friends that speak Spanish and I've learned more from them in like a couple months than I ever did <laughs> three years of learning Spanish. So. Well, I took Spanish from like seventh grade all the way through high school, and I can do this. Yo como el gato en la baño de la biblioteca con queso. <laughs> and I mean, I guess that means I can eat the the cat in the library bathroom with cheese. Bathroom, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I got out of go. six years of Spanish. There you go. So I, it's going to take me places in life. Number four. If you could pick one of these following comedy movies, A, Dumb and Dumber, 2, Happy Gilmore, D, Step Brothers. Step Brothers, probably. I definitely laugh at that one more than the others, but Happy Gilmore is like a classic. You can't. Yesterday was the 25th down. anniversary, too. Oh, okay. I'd say, actually, my other Adam Sandler movie that I like better is, of course, Waterboy. That's a pretty great one. Can't, can't beat them. that one. That one's pretty hilarious. And I'm very impressed by that because both yes. of those came out before you were born. Oh, I've watched. So I would say 99% of the movies I know or came or am aware of are before my time just because yes. that's what I grew up with. It's awesome. Those are my favorites anyway. So there you go. What, what is something that you should do more of that you never do? Um, draw. I used to draw all the time and now I don't have time for it. Um, draw and write. I love writing. I love writing poetry. I love writing books and just have never, since I started grad school, basically, I just don't have the, the mental space for it. <laughs> you don't have five minutes in your day. What, how much do you sleep? Uh, well, I try to get seven hours now, which is great. But before, and even now it's me sacrificing either sleep, training or school, like one or the other. And it, I definitely don't have time to sit down and relax and draw or write stuff. It's, it's not a research paper. I'm writing my thesis right now. That's what my writing goes towards. That's awesome. I like to draw myself. I'm a very good, I mean, not to be braggy or anything, but I can draw too. Uh, <laughs> if reincarnation is real and you could come back as an animal, what animal would you be? Oh, bald eagle. Really? They don't really have any natural predators. You kind of just get to roam around and be majestic and nobody touches you in America or else they get in trouble. So it's pretty sweet life, I guess. You know, so you went the apex predator route. Um, <laughs> I was thinking I would be my cat Spike if I could be exactly <laughs> like him because Spike does nothing pretty much all day but chill. And then he goes outside and he visits like 20 houses in the neighborhood. And if he feels like sleeping over, he just sleeps over their house. Nice. And he eats everywhere. He's like an 18 pound monster of a cat that wow. is everybody in the neighborhood's cat. <laughs> I feel like that's a good life. That's a pretty good life. Yeah. So, okay. Number seven. Can you recite the entire theme song of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? <laughs> no, but I could tell you a couple lines probably. I used to watch that when I was a little kid. It, I, yeah. Is it even air anymore? I think so. It's got to. It's got to be in syndication somewhere. They, yeah. dude. I got home today. I got like go to go home early today because it was a snow day up here, uh -huh. and my kids were getting out early. And I turned the TV on. There was a freaking Saved by the Bells marathon on in the middle of the day. And if they're marathoning that, they got to be marathoning Fresh That's Prince. True. I'm I'm surprised of some shows that they do still air just because of the um, modern offenses that they might bring. Yeah. Saved by the Bell's got a ton of bullying in it, that's for sure. Zach Morris is the biggest bully of all time. All right, here we go. If you could be a, con a contestant on a reality TV show, which one are you going to go on? I don't know if it counts as a reality TV show, but I think it does. Uh, Steve, Steve Austin's, or Steve Stone Cold Austin's, whatever the, the show is with all the fitness freaks that go on the... Oh, uh, oh, oh, the Broken Skull Ranch. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a badass show. It's like... um. I always see the girls wrestling each other in the mud pits or doing the little in the water wrestling. And I like cry laughing every time I watch it, but I'm pretty small, but they have the weight class things now. So I think I could pull it off. Yeah. It's basically Ninja warrior out in the dirt. Yeah. Which I would do fighting. a lot better at than the Ninja warriors because that <laughs> stuff's a little bit more technical, you know? Oh, uh, that's awesome. 
I didn't even think about that one. If you had, <laughs> okay, number nine, I got two more. If you could eat just one food item for the rest of your life, which one are you choosing? Can't eat anything um, else. Does it have to make me healthy or is this like idealistic terms? I'd say that way. Oh, okay. I guess. definitely cookie dough and chocolate milk. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if the healthy thing isn't worked in there, you're not going to live very long, but you're going to live happy. Right, right. Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> if the health thing is an issue, maybe like sweet potatoes. As long as you got some cinnamon and brown sugar for me, I'm, I'm set. All right. I got you <laughs> the, the question of all questions here. Okay. Someone hands you a briefcase and tells you that there's a 50-50 chance of it containing $50 million or a bomb that explodes when you open it. What are you going to do? I figure I'm not going to heaven if I open it because I think there's money in it. So I might just leave that thing alone. Oh, see, I'm going to hell. So <laughs> I, I thought about this a lot, right? So I figured, I guess I would like look around a little bit and find someone that i will be like, hey, I got arthritis in my hands. Can you open this for me? And, and then, then when I hand away. it to them and I just run. <laughs> and if they open it, I'd be like, oh, sorry. I thought I heard somebody calling me over there. And if they blew up, I'm be like, all right, well, I'm alive. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that was worse than just opening yourself. By yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm going to hell. All right. So Miranda Maverick, you're pretty awesome. You're a fun guest. Um, I can't wait to see you back in the ring, hopefully sooner than later. How soon are you trying to get in there? As soon as humanly possible? Yeah, as soon as possible. There's already been one date offered that just didn't work out for me or Jillian. So that's unfortunate, but hopefully, uh, april somewhere in there you know that did that happen once before with you guys where like were you were you offered the december one and then yeah. you had like an exam or something i had finals when i got offered it the first time then i asked if we could push it a couple of weeks and unfortunately talia took the fight already so i didn't get to push it a couple of weeks and well maybe you need to fight talia <laughs> maybe hey. smack her down for taking that there fight that's right <laughs> All right, before I let you go, you want to shout out any uh, sponsors or? Yeah, shout out to my my gym, the House of Muay Thai. They're kind of the ones that have progressed me a long way since I started at uh, Springfield Fight Club in Springfield, Missouri. My family, of course. Um, and then some of my sponsors that have been really helpful lately are Top Mount Apparel. They're the ones that make my personalized shirts. You guys should look them up if you see them. And then uh, there's also victory beef that like literally provides me beef during my fight camps that's been really awesome for me absolute nature cbd that i've been starting to take and use lately a lot um and then just keep up on my social media especially instagram at fear the maverick underscore h-o-m-t to keep up with my other sponsors i've got a lot of discount codes for stuff and um, i actually have a new supporter that's called yes athletics usa and they make like women's wrestling shoes my sister's a wrestler too so all of my proceeds that i make from selling those shoes will go to my little sister and her wrestling career that is awesome well hope to see you in the cage soon best of luck continue on with your super busy life it's very impressive and uh i don't think i could do it so <laughs> thanks for coming on i will uh catch you down the road right all right thank you see you later bye well that was miranda maverick how does one um juggle such a busy life it's amazing to me um i'm gonna go ahead and bring Mike Hunnold on the other half of the Mike and Mish half an hour or half an hour, the hour, the Mike and Mish show coming back at you. Whoa. What's up, Mike? How'd you get here? What's hey. up there, chisel chest? What's up there, rubber neck? What do you think of this whole new setup with the old camouflage background and uh, all that, sh this stuff? All right. It's looking pretty good. Um, I think it's getting a little too fancy for me, so I'm going to have to take off. <laughs> you're, moving, you're going to move way too fast for me. I don't know yeah. if I can handle it. Listen, we're trying over here. We're trying. Now, let's get into the uh, comments real quick. Amy says, same as you. Oh, this, that was about the drawing. She said she's in the drawing. Miranda Maverick, what a girl, huh? Oh, what an awesome guest. I, I mean, 16 years old. She started at 16 and she's 23. She's fighting in the UFC. She's getting her PhD. Uh, you know, just and she's teaching, right? And she's teaching. Dude. Um Jeez, she went from sleep on the time. She stepped into the mix to the martial arts world at 16 years old. She's 23 right now. She's a brown belt in jujitsu. She's a professional fighter with 11 fights under her belt. Not to mention probably 
a dozen to 15 freaking amateur fights and managed to get a degree and now she's going for her, P, uh, her PhD. It's just unbelievable. I don't know, man. I have a hard time getting Jackson and Nolan's bags ready for school in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time getting myself ready for for work in the morning. I, that's I a lot of stuff. I can't Too tell you stuff. how many I can't tell you how many times it's my turn to get the kids ready for school. Right here's a here's an I, here's a difference between a 23 year old superstar like this girl and uh, a 39 year old washed up soldier like myself. I don't know how many times I've gotten in the truck and drove off with the boys in the back of the truck to bring them to the morning program. And realized that I didn't take my Nexium and I left my coffee on the counter. I'm talking four times a month. Well, that probably happens to me. Like <laughs> I leave stuff in the house constantly and then I just blame it on Steph. It's, you're better it's the easiest thing to do. I go, oh, well, you rushed me. I, I, I forgot. I forgot this. I forgot that. And if you didn't rush me, I wouldn't have forgotten. So it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> I'm not the one who forgets every time we leave the house. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you would have helped me a little bit, I wouldn't have forgotten. Yeah, slow down a little bit. You got both of the kids ready. You got into the car. They're dressed. They're ready to go. And I'm in the I'm in the bedroom, barely ready, and I'm coming out. And usually, I'm, I, you know, I'm the quick one getting ready. She takes an hour and a half to get ready. It takes me five minutes. So somehow, I'm the last person out of the house, and I forget shit. I don't get it. It's freaking hilarious, man. That I do girl, get it. It's your fault. I got to tell you, man. She might have been one of the most interesting people I've had on the show so far. And I've had, dude, remember, I had Shoni Carter on, the first guest I ever had before it was Mission Accomplished, and it was uh, Combos with Kyle. Yeah. I had Mr. International Shoni Carter on for an hour and a half, and that dude just told crazy-ass story after crazy-ass story. I thought he was the most interesting person I ever had to I ever talk to. And then Miranda Maverick comes in here, joins... Decides to join high school wrestling as a senior. Yeah. Just walks onto the wrestling team, quits halfway through the season, goes to college and gets offered a college, a college wrestling spot, which is insane. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't, I can't even, I can't even fathom how you go from 16 years old to professional at 18. It's just nuts. You know how many times somebody's come up to me, like, uh, you know, senior NCO or somebody, we're having a chat and they're like, do you go to school? Did you go to college? And I'm like, no, nah, I didn't. I just joined the military. Like, oh, you get free school. You should do it. And they kind of talk me into like believing like, oh, I'm like, when I leave the conversation, I'm like, I'm going to go do school. And then I get home and I go, I ain't doing school. I don't want to do that. I don't have time for this. Oh, uh, dude. It's I got just... mouths to feed here. I don't got time for that. I mean, look at Look at how much schooling we had to, to produce a show like this. Zero. Oh, what do you know? Boom. Look at us. Self-made. Couple of zeros. <laughs> All right, dude. Let, let's let's talk about some shit, man. Let's talk about uh, my mom's probably watching. So I've been trying to watch the f bombs and whatnot. I haven't dropped one this entire episode. I know I haven't. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, uh, last weekend, yeah, last weekend we had a uh, we had a um, pay per view UFC two fifty eight. Let's uh, just breeze through this. What was your like? What was your impactful thoughts on this? Like, what, what, what hit you the most? Was it Usman and only Usman, or was there anything else on this card that really like stuck out to you? Well, to be funny, I guess the thing that was hit the hardest was my pocket. <laughs> and it didn't like it whatsoever. I mean, it was a decent show, but for seventy bucks, I mean, we lost a few fights here, and I was a little upset about that. But if we want to talk about the fights, I guess I would have to say that the Usman fight was great, but the most surprising fight of the night was the, the uh, uh, Rodolfo Vieira losing. Oh yeah, via submission. So that was that was like the most surprising thing to me because I thought Usman was going to win the fight, but it was a great fight with Usman and Burns. But that um, Rodolfo Vieira just, thing just was like R Rodolfo Vieira. Now we hyped that fight up last week. We because that guy's an absolute monster, and if you yeah. see him, he looks like he's never stepped out of a gym in his entire life. The guy is just built like a monster, and he's like the black he's the black belt hunter, and he's a four time or seven time world champion, whatever he is. That guy had the worst gas tank I think I've ever seen ever. That was worse than 
What was worse, him or Dada 5000 against Kimbo Slice? <sighs> him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because in, in, Dada in, 5000 is not a uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt who's done MMA and is the black belt hunter and was hyped up by Dana White before the fight. He's not. He's just a guy who did backyard fighting and he wasn't even the most popular guy. So now, if if uh, if Rodolfo Vieira and Dada 5000 took the Army ACFT, who do you think would perform better? <laughs> Def- I, I'm still going to have to say Ad- Vieira is going to perform better, I, th- I yeah. think. I mean, I that guy is a massive guy. Well, the ACFT is a little different now. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. the it's, you know, he's a big guy. I think he'll do okay, but he'll probably do horrible at the run at the end. No, it was a good performance by Hernandez. And it, for him to tap a guy like Vieira is a real big feather in his cap for sure. That was like, that was the shock of the night for sure. Um Nobody, and he was the biggest betting underdog of the night, Hernandez was. So if anybody put money on Vieira thinking they were going to get an easy 100, they got kicked in the nuts hard. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the betting line for uh, submission by Fluffy was yeah. like, I think it was 3,300 or 3,100. So, geez, like. Cool. serious dough because he was not gonna you know he wanted to win by submission as soon as he had the advantage he he wanted that submission he didn't want that ko he wanted to take him down and submit him because that's huge huge that's unbelievable the only other like fights that really i mean kamaru usman um displaying the power in his jab of course and everybody his jab was the big talk all the way which i I talked to uh, Lorenzo last night about it, and it's like people – no, not uh, Dean Thomas last night. Yeah. And um, it's like people forget, like, George St. Pierre against J- Josh Koscheck, uh, Josh Koscheck in their rematch. It was Josh Ko- – it was uh, GSP Koscheck 2. He demolished Koscheck's face with jabs that entire fight. It was just GSP picking him apart with jabs the entire time bloody in his face up and at that point i was like man this is the greatest use of a jab i've ever seen in my life and then the other night they're like oh, we've never seen anybody use a jab like this before i'm like yeah. you you guys are idiots come on man come on dc <laughs> i know come on like you you've <laughs> never seen another jab <laughs> yeah. This is UFC 258. So there's been 258 pay-per-views, never mind fight nights and yeah. on ESPN and on Fox and all that other stuff. And all the other fights all over the world, MMA, they've never seen a jab. Never seen a jab like that. Th- th- those guys, those two, and, and you know, you love Rogan and you love DC and you I love Anik. And Anik's the best out of the three of them. Oh, he's too. great. He's great. But DC and Joe Rogan are like the king of that was the greatest yeah. whatever I've ever. This might be the best fight I've ever seen in my life. Best knockout I've ever seen. That's the that is the most devastating knockout I've ever seen. That like, was the number one strawweight fight <laughs> I've ever seen ever in the history. Of strawweight fights is the best one. Yeah, and it's like like you just said, out of two hundred and fifty eight pay-per-views yeah it's the best one ever this is the best one you've ever seen you guys you need to get, get come on man come yeah, on that, re- that recency bias is strong in mma strong real strong yeah it was nice to see uh kelvin gastelum get a get a win back after three hard losses against three hard like you know gastelum gastelum foot izzy darren till and jack hermanson in a row monsters Monsters, and he finally got a win back against Ian Heinish. That was nice. And Alexa Grasso really surprised me personally. I thought, I thought uh, Macy Barber was going to come in and prove something. She'd been out with an injury and blame the whole last loss on her injury. And uh, and she got she got worked, <laughs> and she got and worked on the ground by a boxer. Right. That was the most impressive. The ground game. So when we were talking about this last week, it was like, you know, Macy Barber, she's going to look to wrestle because Grasso's had problems with wrestlers in some past fights. And man, not anymore, I guess. At least not in that fight. She was 
doing really good. Like you could tell she was practicing her jujitsu for sure. Yeah, it was, um, it was very impressive. And like, like I had spoke with Miranda uh, a few minutes ago, the two girls that really stick out in that division. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Actually, let's talk about it now. The two girls. So the state of women's MMA for the UFC straw weights, fine. Straw weights got a bunch of killers. They got a bunch of people they could play with and and they got four or five contenders that they could, you know, work their way in there for title, title picture and title fights. But flyweight and bantamweight, they're in disarray right now because Valentina Shevchenko has basically cleaned out the entire division. They want to stick to rankings. Stranglehold. Yeah, they they, they want to stick to the rankings and the number next to people's names when making these title fights. In the rankings, I feel like they should take the rankings and just flush them and just go with what makes sense. Because if you look at that division, I got it up on the computer here. Mm -hmm. you, yep. got, you got Valentina Shevchenko, you got Jessica Antraj. I would say those two should probably fight, if you ask me. After that... Valentina's not going to fight Chukagi again. She just beat Jennifer Maya. Lauren Murphy's a good fighter, but is she is she ready for a title fight against Valentina Shevchenko? I don't think so. Cynthia Cavallo just lost it, or I think she just uh, she just got a win back. She had a draw against Marina Mar Rodriguez, and she just beat Jessica I. Jessica I is basically I don't want to say washed up, but she's not what she used to be. JoJo Calderwood. It, is whatever. I don't know, man. Alexa Grasso just put on a goddamn well-rounded perform performance against a very tough opponent. She could stand. She's probably the best boxer in the division. And yeah. now she proved that she could go on the ground. Mm -hmm. Alexa Grasso is an extremely intriguing fighter. Miranda Maverick just came over from Invicta, demolished a chick in the first round in her debut. She was supposed to fight for the Invicta title. Take the take the ranking numbers and just erase them off the side of their names and just look at which ones make the most sense in the division at this point. Because it might make sense to have Valentina fight like the number 17th girl right now. I know. She's wiped out the whole division. Uh, right. There's not – the contenders are not so much contenders as much as they are just there. Mm -hmm. They're just there. Here we are. We're in the rankings, but we're not really contenders – because I feel like even Andrade, and she's a good fighter and all, but I mean, she's beat Chukagian when she came uh, when she came over and switched divisions. She beat Chukagian with a body shot pretty pretty quickly. It was in the first round, like four minutes and change. But that was her one win in the last three fights, in which she lost to uh, what Wei Li, and she also lost to Nami Rose. Yunus. Yeah, Rose. right. So like. You know, she's got one win in the division. Sure, she's ranked number one because I think they just want to kind of push that up because Valentina doesn't have anything. And then you have Lauren Murphy, who's coming off of like three fights. Four, three or four in a row. Three or four. So. Yeah, three or four uh, fights she she won. Uh, she won four, yeah. So, but the, but the names that she beat aren't that high up on the list, and they're definitely not contenders for Valentina Shevchenko. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't even practice with them to fight Valentina. Like those, like she... Valentina is the queen of that division. And like I was saying earlier, if Valentina could get down at 115, we'd only have two champions in four women's divisions. It would be a wrap. Right. Valentina would have the straw and the flyweight. And then Amanda would have Bantam and Featherweight. And it would just, like you just said, to be chokehold. Yeah, it's kind of like how Ronda Rousey, when she was so dominant when she was fighting, and it was like, is anybody going to be able to beat her? She's just so far of, ahead of everyone at that time. But then once she got beat, then we had girls that were more dynamic yeah. fighters, and they there was a little bit of back and forth, but Valentina and Nunes asserted their dominance on their divisions, and that was it. And even when they fight each other, sure, Valentina lost twice, but did she really win, lo lose twice? You know, so they're very evenly matched and they're just, no one can touch them right now. I just don't see it happening. Not this year and not next year. So everyone can just hope 
that they retire or I don't know, slow down. Who knows? <laughs> well, dude, when I when I was on uh, against and the that's Kane, not a dig at anybody. I nah, just you know it's tough. It is man. what it is. They're I so mean, good. It, it's almost like I don't know. They, when I when I was on against the cage with Ben Fields, and we were like predicting the end of the year champions, and uh, mm-hmm. I was like, dude, you know what? You want to be all stupid and wild, like Ben picked Lauren Murphy to be the be the women's champion at 125 pounds over Valentina Shevchenko by the end of the year, and I think that he might have smoked a little bit of that wacky tobacco right before he made that call. I don't know what he was thinking, but. So I was like, you know what? You want to make a crazy call like that? I'm going to make this crazy call for Bantamweight division. It doesn't make sense for Valentina to fight anybody in that division anymore. Amanda Nunes is going to fight and win against Megan Anderson. And Megan Anderson is a tough opponent, but she's going to beat her. I mean, I'm 99% sure Amanda Nunes wins that fight. Mm -hmm. When she comes back down to Bantamweight, which I don't have the rankings in front of me right now, but if you were to look at the Bantamweight division, it is the exact same freaking situation that we were just talking about. You got yes. Jermaine – Nunes is not going to fight Jermaine Duran to me again. Holly Holm just beat um, Arena Eldana. So yep. Demolished. Th- yeah, demolished. Arena Eldana is out of the picture. They're not going to yep. fight – she's not going to fight Holly Holm again. No. Nope. Aspen Ladd's coming back off an injury. Maybe she gets a shot, but I doubt it. Juliana Payne, you called her out. She blew her off. Like Nunez was like, "Yeah, no thanks. You know, you're good, but you're not that good." Yeah. And then you got a fight that's coming up this weekend. Maybe Catlin Vieira versus Yana Kuniskaya in the yep. card this weekend. Mm-hmm. Number six versus number seven. Maybe one of those two does something spectacular and completely murks the other one off the off the face of the earth or something in, in, in like a devastating way, and they're like, "Holy shit!" Number seven, Yana Kuniskaya just kicked the head off of uh, Christine, uh, Caitlin Vieira. She's next in line for the title. But I don't really know if any of that's going to happen. So what I think is going to happen is... There's not Nunez- many knockouts between them two for that. It's very unlikely right. for something crazy to happen like that. So what's going to happen, I think, you know, Mystic Mish is about to speak here. Um, <laughs> I'm looking into my crystal ball. Amanda Nunes beats Megan Anderson next month or next week is it next week that uh, it's two, march march two, 6th i think it's two weeks away so, two, two uh, so weeks you know we got this uh, we got uh the um the gain card after this week you know lewis okay. and blades so in two weeks from now yeah nunez defends her title against megan anderson i think it's march 6th i think yep there's so, so many so then they make a valentina title defense for flyweight valentina probably fights Jessica Andrade or Jojo Calderwood in May or June. She wins that easy. So what else do they have to do other than make Valentina versus Nunes part three, the trilogy fight in like November? You know what I mean? Give give them each six months or whatever. And then, um, yeah, March 6th. Facebook user says March 6th. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's March. 6th. And when I say Facebook user, user, I'm not talking about you, Mike. I'm talking about uh, somebody John else. Morissette. Oh, John Morissette. Thanks, John. I hope you got your shirt. I mailed it to you the other day. I hope you got it. Let me know if you got it or not. Um, and I hope it fits as a big boy. Um, yeah, the only fight that makes sense after they each defend their title, their respective titles for those two divisions, they meet back at the Bantamweight 135 pound division, they run back that trilogy. Valentina won that second fight. I don't give a shit what anybody says. If you watch that second fight, I don't know what the judges were watching. I had it clear, Valentina. I don't know about you. But I'd have to agree with you. I, right. I could be biased, but I, I, I really I don't think I am. I, I I like, you know, there's some fighters I really like and want to win, but like I feel like that's just a fight that I I mean, you could see the look of disappointment on Valentina and how she acted after the fight. And she's like, look at my face, <laughs> you know? Yeah. She says, the only blood on me is on my foot from kicking her. From kicking her, right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think the issue is, like, the judging is, we all know, 
a little behind the times. Uh, we need to bring in, you know, Mike and Mish to be the judges on the next UFC card or, you know, so maybe some ex fighters like we've talked about in the past, they need to start getting these judges who did boxing or, you know, wherever they, wherever they've come from and they need to go back to there and let some of these MMA fighters come in and say, Hey, <laughs> you know, good friend of mine, Chris Simmons. Okay. Uh, you know, jujitsu extraordinaire says, I'm, I coming, out of <laughs> I'm coming out of retirement as a transgender and I'll fight any woman. Look, That's Chris what Simmons, you look good in the gi there. And I think that you have a good chance against any woman out there. I think you'll do all right. Except it might be a learning curve, but except for the two women we're talking about, <laughs> except for the two women we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're, they're world beaters for sure. But that's a lot, you know, your first fight is it going to be against Fallon Fox? Fallon Fox, oh boy! You know, I thought I saw I thought I saw some weird article about a, a transgender fighter recently fighting a woman and like cracking her skull. He yeah, like, I think that was uh, I think that was that. I was, believe was so. It, was it Fallon Fox? I think so, but I don't know if it was like a recycled story from way in the uh, rain oh, back okay. in the day or not because. I have no idea, but anyways, it's wild shit. So, anyways, what we we just we, you know, I wanted to talk about the 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 state of those two women's divisions because UFC matchmakers got a lot on their table with those two. Those two girls have basically put it, you know, they got the whole freaking that that, that those whole two divisions are at a stalemate right now. So they should yeah. go ahead and make that trilogy. And I'll tell you right, right now, if they did make that trilogy and Valentina was to beat Amanda Nunes, I bet she retired. She's got nothing else to prove. I, she doesn't. She doesn't. But, you know, I. she's 34 yeah, I, years old. She's beating she everybody. Is. She's a multiple time champion. She's got a baby now. Yeah. She's married. And, you know, I mean, she could she could coach her wife to to be a world champion. Right. I mean, that would be great. Um, but, but I don't know. If she'll, I don't know. If she'll do that. I feel like she, she's going to be around for another three or four years. I really do. I don't think she's going anywhere. She's so dominant. She hasn't <laughs> lost. And I feel like if she, if she does end up losing, whether it's this year, next year, or maybe never. But when if she was to lose, do you think that she's going to be like, ah, I lost. I'm out of here. I don't see it. I just feel like she's going to be like, I haven't lost like forever. So yeah. I'm, that was a fluke. I'm coming back. I got to prove myself. So that you might mean, just you mean to tell me drive. she's she's not going to take the Ronda Rousey route? No just way. Just turn her back on the sport. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. You're probably no. Right. I just don't think so, man. I think she has way too much pride for that, and I think that she's like because she's so dominant. How can she be like I lost uh, and I'm going to leave? No way. She's going to come right back, and she's going to come back even stronger because that'll light a fire underneath her. Can you imagine being the matchmakers and you love these champions, but it's like, well, we got to find somebody to mix it up a little bit here. We need yeah. somebody to beat them, you know. Yeah, both uh, those girls should go fight at Baron. The, both those girls should go fight at BKFC and open up the divisions. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. And uh, speaking of BKFC. Yeah. Boom. Tyler Goodjohn. He took a couple a couple weeks off. He went home. He said he was done with bare knuckle fight, uh, bare knuckle boxing. I know what he was doing. Yeah, he and was he was retired and staying busy. He was staying real busy. <laughs> Especially one of the nights, the night of the fights, he was super busy when we were at, uh, when we were getting our uh, smoothies over at that tropical smoothie place and we yeah. were heading over, there was some Instagram posts at uh, NC17, you know, <laughs> and Snapchat, his Snapchat was, was uh, lighting up that night. Yeah. He's so a anyways, wild guy. What do you think about that, man? Tyler, good John. He was upset with BKFC. There was money issues. He was done with that company. He went. He he took his bag and he went back to. Uh, he went back to England, and now boom! All of a sudden, I don't know. Water under the bridge. He's coming back. Who do you want to see him fight? What do you think about the whole situation? All right. So he he comes on the show, uh, and David Feldman shows up. And for ever, for everyone who doesn't know who David Feldman is, I'm just gonna basically say he's the Dana White of. BKFC. So he comes on and and they're they 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 confront each other on the show, you know, and good John saying, oh, I didn't get paid, blah, 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 blah. That's why he left. God Bear also left. Uh, and they said they were gonna start their own thing, their own fighting bare knuckle over in the uh UK, I think, over in Europe. 
So basically what happened was they tried to give him a check that night. Uh, you know, Feldman tried to give good John a check and Feldman, uh, I mean, uh, good John tells Kevin Smith, I guess. So I can't, I can't have a check, you know, what, for whatever reason he denies the check. So then they have to figure out how they can wire the money to him. And like, he's got this small bank. Like, I don't know why he can't get a check. So there must be some where, like, I don't want to like, act as if I really know what's going on, but like, why can't you cash a check? I don't understand that you're a grown man. You can't go cash a check. So they tried to wire a money and the bank like took a lot of time. Cause it's like a small bank somewhere in some small town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like he had to Venmo or send like, uh, the, the, the president of BKFC has to send money through cash app. And like Kevin Smith had to send him money too, like through. And, and then David Feldman had to give Kevin Smith who is, Good John's manager for everyone that's watching. They had to give him money and like Feldman had to pay like Kevin Smith back and stuff just to get him his pay. So it did take five weeks, but it was nobody's fault but his own. So then he goes bad mouthing so the company. He's bad mouthing the company. He's saying this and that. And then who's knocking on the door? It's Tyler Good John. And listen, when he was on the show, I loved him. I think he's he's good. I've got nothing against him, but I, I feel like that's kind of a foul move. You know what I mean? It's kind of a shitty thing to do. Uh, especially if you're going to come back and ask to fight, fight, you know, just a couple weeks after you were just talking shit, but he's a good fighter. They want him to be there. He's got a good following. He's also a porn star. And uh, <laughs> for who I want him to fight, who I would like to see him fight is somebody that you've had on the show here. Uh, and that is John Lee Chalbeck, who I've become a big fan of uh, just by going to see Knuckle Mania and watching him fight live. He's amazing. He has options now. Now Tyler is a really big name, and and that whole that whole wire and money thing is so weird to me because we all have smartphones. Everybody has bank apps on their phone, and you could mo you can mobile deposit a check in seconds for any bank, like anywhere. I, I don't know what kind of bank he had, or something. like was it some like Podunk bank where they only use paper and you I can guess. only cash it in person or something like that. It's that makes sense. It's 1987 in his bank or something like that because I know that I have USAA on my phone and when I mobile deposit a check, you're allowed to you're allowed to deposit up to a hundred thousand dollars a day. Right. I would I would love to see the day when I could deposit a hundred thousand dollars in one day into my my bank account, but it's coming you could, up. you could do that. So I don't understand, man. Unless it was you know unless it was bigger than that, or, or I don't know. But either way. Like, we don't know how much he was getting paid. So maybe it was no. something like that where you, like, but I can't imagine if it was more than that. You know what I mean? It was, I like, can't. Like, no way. Dude, Paige Van Zandt just got a quarter mil to fight, or 400,000, and pa Paige Van Zandt's like a mega, mega, mega world star. So Right, right. So. Big star. Now, and, and Tyler has a lot of options coming back. I mean, like you said, John Lee Chalbeck. You got Artem Lobov. You got yep. Jason Knight. You mm -hmm. got... Paulie Malinaji, maybe. You yes. know what I mean? Yep. And and then you got Brandon Lambert still uh, calling him out. Like Brandon Lambert. Trolling. <laughs> that guy is the king of all trolls. I uh he's got I the just, 10k challenge. Yeah. I he well now it's 20k. He saw somebody call them out <laughs> yesterday. They said, Why don't you bump it up to 20? Maybe he'll fight you. And he said, Think I won't, and then he hashtag 20k challenge. So Brandon Lambert for as, you know, poor of a performance that he had. And now like, you know what, man, we were there and we saw it and we saw like, it wasn't impressive. And he has to know that he has to know that like everything about his performance wasn't all that good. Right. Mm -hmm. But he did come out and say that he dropped 45 pounds and the dude is six foot two or something like that. Yeah. He's very tall. And to be, to be that tall and to fight at 135, and we saw him the day of the weigh-ins, and he was struggling to make that 135, and he never even made it. It was like 137 he made it to. I don't know, man. I have been 205 pounds for 17 years. If you told me to cut down to 160, you know, in six weeks or whatever. You might die. I would probably die. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I might die I, to make, to, to make it down to one sixty, 
for me, I feel like I would really be struggling with life. Oh God, it's and, and, awful. And he said he went from like one one eighty or one seventy five, one eighty to one thirty seven. That's just dangerous, man. It's dangerous. Now I don't know if all that weight loss affected the technique of his jab that he was throwing that night. And the uh, yeah, the haymaker right. telegraph line up like he would put it back here. He's why I order, <laughs> why I order. Oh. He would do it, and then like he would throw the jab. Like he, I don't know, man. He was throwing the jab he was like way from, back, but he was throwing his jab like from his waist, and like and it yes. could be because of his height. It could be because of his I, height. And Kid Gotti is like way down here to him, so like he was throwing this jab like weirdly downward and. I don't know, man. Like nothing about the performance was all that great, but also, I mean, throw twenty pounds on the guy and see if he performs better. You know what I mean? Yeah. He says that he says at one fifty five he will kill Tyler Goodjohn. That's what he said. I will kill that man at one hundred fifty five pounds. Hey, listen, Brandon Lambert. If you watch this, I I have no issues with you. I th- I think he's a good guy too. He's on the show. He was cool. We met him. Yeah. I've seen Tyler Goodjohn fight. <laughs> and I just think that, like, listen, Brandon Lambert obviously got balls. He knows somewhat how to fight because he was in there and he lasted a little while. You know what I mean? But around and a half. Listen, no. 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 I would take don't, a few. No. I, would, I would take a few lower, lower yes. level. I don't want to call any of these guys lower level because oh, they're all no, professional but like, fighters, but fight someone. But a newer little, professional fighters. A little further fighters, down right. on the pecking order. A little further right. down. Because when you look at that 145 division for bare knuckle, the ones we mentioned are like the five top of the food chain. You know right. what I mean? Mm-hmm. You got you got Chalbeck, Artem, Knight, Malinaji, and Good John. Those are like the top five there. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Lambert should just chill out for a little bit and uh He's training with some good people. He's training with Chris Sorrow. He's training with yeah. Elvin Brito. He's he's training with Britton Hart. He's got a good team down there. All working. good people. Right. That we so, met. Right. So, you know, get that working. Just train for a little while longer, man. Yeah. And uh try it again. If they give you another shot, God bless you. Right. Put that work in, fight some people, build your name, and then call out Tyler Goodjohn when the time is right. But don't do it now because I feel like if he goes to Tyler Goodjohn and loses, that's it. All right. That's it. Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. Mike. So, I am uh, I'm I'm way too big for Brandon Goodjo- uh Brandon Lambert. But you, you know, what do you weigh? 165? Yep. Could you drop 20 pounds and fight Brandon Lambert at 145 pounds? Yeah, 37 years old, maybe. Um, he's I can definitely drop. Okay, so I can definitely drop the weight. You want me to fight bare knuckle? <laughs> I've never fought a day in my life. <laughs> it's, okay, hashtag. Besides like a street fight. Hashtag Mike versus Malo uh, in July. 20K challenge. I feel like I'll have to do, uh, you know, to be honest with you, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even joke about it because I'm definitely not fighting anybody, but I do have stamina to last a long time, but fighting's a whole different beast. You know, I might be able to run really far, but if I feel like if I can outlast them after a couple of rounds and just wear them out, I just won't throw a punch for two rounds, three rounds, not one. Dude, I'm thinking like the season finale of my, uh, the adventures of I'm Mike just and kidding. Mish. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the season finale of the adventures of Mike and Mish where Mike fights Malo. At a bare knuckle event, what do you think? Yeah, right. If you do that, I'll have to fight Lorenzo Hunt, and we'll both be fucked. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> you do that first. We'll see how it works out, and then I'll yeah, God. check my options. Listen, for the right amount of dollars to show oh, up, yeah, I right. think I think Lorenzo likes me enough not to kill me. And he said it himself last night. He doesn't like to hurt people. So yeah, he doesn't. He just likes to knock people out and then punch them in the face when they're falling. You know, that's all. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, anyways, let's wrap it up, man. We talked about Catlin Vieira versus Yana Kuniskaya. Just so everybody knows, there is an event this weekend. You got Curtis Blades fighting uh, Derek Lewis in the main event of Fight Night. You got Catlin Vieira versus Yana Kunduskaya in the in the co-main, and I can't really tell you all that much about the rest of the card because I don't really think it's worth talking about. 
honestly. I don't want to downplay a card, but what do you think, Mike? No, I mean, those are the two fights. There's some other, you know, Flash Gordon is fighting. Uh, you've got uh, Violent Bob Ross on the card, but, you know, we'll see how it pans out. And if anything great happens, we'll talk about it next week, you know? Yeah, man. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in and listening to us uh, shoot the shit. Miranda Maverick was awesome. I'm going to let Mike go and wrap this show up. Mikey, I'll see you later, buddy. See you later. All right. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mission Accomplished. Tune in next Wednesday when I have the fight of the night winner from BKFC Knuckle Mania, Taylor Starling, fresh off her victory over Carissa Sagala and her coach, head coach, fellow MMA fighter, boyfriend, Marine, Keith Richardson, rock star himself, will be on. So Taylor Starling and Keith Richardson tomorrow, uh, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. I'm going to get up out of here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Peace. Mm -hmm.